delivering us coming into this day. So he then gave us a new mercy that we then can understand his love for us. Uh, this conundrum of the presence of evil and this benevolent God, it takes us to Habakkuk. And, uh, he looks and he says, Jehovah, of course, he's a Hebrew prophet. He says, Jehovah, he says, I, 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 you are of purer eyes than this. How can you behold, look upon uh, all this devastation that's going on? There are many people today uh, who are the same mind. It's not that they don't want to believe God. It's just that in the contrast of what they see uh, and what they hear about God uh, and what they would like to believe or apprehend, uh, uh, they just again cannot wrap their head around it. Uh, Becca was the same way, so one ought not feel bad. Uh, he says, how can you even look on such happenings? Uh, listen, the Bible goes on and Amos speaks up uh, and he says, uh, uh, God speaks to him and said, is there evil in the city? Yeah. And God has not performed it, uh, not allowed it. Uh, this is where we take the sovereignty from God uh, and give it to the devil. Uh, we give it to someone else as if uh, they can initiate an act outside of, as Aristotle said, uh, there must be a first mover uh, and everything else is a reaction. Uh, he says, so as shall there be evil in the city uh, and God has not done it. Listen, the evil all around us today. It is a work of God, but he tells us why he does it. As we said about mercy, how can we know the mercy of God except we are in a place of pitifulness? Psalms 103. And like a father pitieth his children. Uh, you are all parents, you know what it's like. Uh, the kid is a kid and the father pities them because their knowledge uh, is small. Uh, their understanding has not yet reached the place where they can know what the parent is doing. Uh, and so the parent, the father, pities the child. Uh, God pities us many times, uh, knowing that we don't know, as Paul say, what we ought to know. Uh, Isaiah 45, uh, the scripture says, Jehovah is speaking to Isaiah. Uh, he says, listen, uh, he says, I create evil uh, so that uh, I can bring about peace. Uh, if there is no evil, how would we know about peace? Uh, so what God tells us here, uh, he is telling Isaiah, I'm the one that brings about a contrast. Uh, Adam, we always share this because it's true. Uh, Adam didn't know nothing other than what was there before him. Uh, he didn't know good or evil. Somebody said he did. Uh, he didn't, the Bible tells us, uh, because the tree, not the tree itself, uh, but it's within him, uh, it had not been triggered because he simply was doing what he was told to do. But the moment that he ate of the tree, it's not the tree, it was the disobedience to God's word that triggered a contrast among humankind. Now he would know good and evil. Not just evil. He knew no good before the end. That's why we share and say sometimes folk that have grown up with a silver spoon, they don't understand what it's like to live in the hood. They don't understand when they meet folk that have other problems because they only live one way during their lifetime. Listen, that is so important to understand God working in your life. And so Job began to explain to us uh, and share with us what, how it works. Uh, shall we not receive good from the Lord, the Lord is, uh, and not evil also? Uh, what do we expect? Uh, there's a reason why God brings uh, adversity in our lives. Uh, Joseph speaks it out. 
plead plainly uh, and tells his brother. And uh, he said, listen, you all meant it for evil, uh, but there's a God that supersedes, that superintends things, uh, and he meant it for good. Uh, this is what God is working in your life. Uh, though the evil one brings against you, uh, you must learn to thank God uh, because all these things together uh, will work out something good for your life. Uh, I wish I had somebody that knew what God has been working in your life. Uh, uh, that's why I, when we begin to complain, Paul talks about it. Uh, believers should leave off and grow out of complaining. Uh, when folk complain, it shares a number of things. Uh, number one, that their knowledge is lacking, uh, that is of God uh, and his ways and his works. Uh, number two, uh, it shares that they are not really seeking to know him. For as we seek to know God, as the invitation comes in Isaiah to Israel, uh, come and let us reason. Uh, let us put things in a perspective uh, whereby you can see God saying how I think. Uh, that's why he told them, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Uh, your ways are not my ways. Uh, this is why talking to God is so important. Uh, you can talk to him any time of day. You can talk to him in your automobile. Uh, as we've said before, you don't have to be prostrate. Uh, and I admire uh, all of my usual high and my uh, Islamic friends, uh, those believers who prostrate themselves. Uh, but really, when talking to God, uh, sometimes you just can't find the place to lay down. Uh, sometimes you're just sitting up. Uh, have you ever been there? Uh, sometimes you are walking like David uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, and yet you can communicate with God. Uh, and so we come to find that this servant, uh, this one called the devil, uh, the Bible tells us that he is the shining one. Uh, I'm not going to get into Genesis 3. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to help people and to eject them uh, from the thought uh, that he is talking to a snake. Uh, listen, Jesus called uh, Pharaoh Herod a fox, uh, but he wasn't a fox. Uh, in, in Genesis 49, uh, it says that Dan uh, is like a serpent, a snake, uh, but Dan didn't turn to one. But when you read the scriptures, uh, the serpent, the Bible, the term is used in the Hebrew. That's why I, I'm, I'm a proponent uh, and, and I propagate. Uh, put forth, present to people uh, that you must understand God's word. Uh, listen, the Bible tells us uh, that Nekesh, uh, the Hebrew word for the shining one, uh, it goes to share with us uh, that here he is deceived uh, by one who seems to be illuminous. Uh, listen, it's almost like what Paul says in the New Testament. Uh, now you find Satan uh, He's going about trying to deceive the believers. And the Bible says that he's trying to put on and his messengers as they are messengers of light, but they are not. The Hebrew word that comes from this is adversary, usually translated the devil. He who misrepresents God. That's who the devil is. Get back to our text today. So that's why when Jesus is confronted by the devil, the shining one, we find that he must defeat him, and he defeats him three times. Notice when he comes to him the third time, he then attacks his worship to God. The Bible says this is when he tells him, listen, he said, go away, for it is written that we shall not worship no one but the Lord God. Worship shall only be to God. 
folk don't understand that because uh, we worship many things. Uh, it's not because somebody says, well, I'm not going to church today uh, because I'm going on vacation. I'm going to a game. I'm going to do this and that. Uh, but it comes to the fact uh, of my worship shall never uh, be superseded by anything else. Uh, in other words, I learn how to worship him. The Bible says in spirit and in truth. And so he who misrepresents God, he is the one that's trying to get you to worship him. Listen, and nobody's trying to get you to worship him. But the Bible shares with us that when you start loving something more than God, loving something more than your salvation. Uh, he tells us uh, that you love worldly things. Uh, and worldly things simply means uh, that I'll put it before my salvation. Uh, I used to hear folks say, uh, uh, let me just put my salvation on the shelf. Uh, honey, don't do that. Because uh, somebody may come and move the shelf while it's there. Uh, when you return, it's gone and the shell. Uh, uh, listen, it's true though uh, that you must find yourself uh, always being in possession uh, of the mind that Paul said. Uh, Let this mind be in you. Uh, it's that mind of worship uh, that Paul speaks plainly to you. Uh, and so Jesus here now, uh, he's been confronted by him. Uh, who has challenged him in three ways. Because temptation, my friend, it just doesn't come from the devil, but it comes from our environment that's called worldly. And it comes from within that ourselves. See, many times we blame things on the devil, but really it's us. The devil just takes an occasion of how we act, uh, and he moves in on that. Uh, and this is why this lesson shares with us uh, that Jesus spoke it from the old covenant. Uh, this is where the Lord told him, uh, and this is what the scripture really means. Uh, he tells the Israel in Deuteronomy, uh, he says, I let you go hungry, uh, and I humbled you uh, so that you could understand that a man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so many times I try to share with believers, as many do, that everything in the Bible that we call scriptures is not the words of God. They may be in what we call the word of God, the Bible, but they are not words articulated by God. It is here that you must be careful because if you want to live a life of stability, a life of wholeness, you must recognize what God said versus the scriptures that were written for our learning and admonition how people live how they act how they respond those things we are admonished by but God's words whatever God said you can believe you can go on it so he tells Israel he said listen I have humbled you I will let you go hungry so that you can realize that it's my word that keeps you living. Uh, all that believers can understand this uh, and move to the place in this parenthetical age uh, of a grace uh, where the Bible tells us uh, that the power of God's word uh, that he has for the body of Christ uh, is far and above. Uh, that's our theme this year uh, to cause you to be catapulted from where you are and to understand where God has seated you. Look what 
the scripture tells us, it tells us that Christ, he has been seated above all principalities and powers, principalities and powers, that he is at the right hand of the power of God. It tells us that he is listening to this far above the heavens. Only three times in the New Testament where you find the term far and above. Notice this now. If Jesus is above every principality and power, what it is, and if he's above the heavens, but somebody said, what does it mean? Heaven means spiritual faces. It doesn't simply mean something whereby it's back one or the other. It's a place of positions because in the celestial world, you have all kinds of echelons. You have all kinds of chain of commands. And so the Bible tells us that he has taken us the body of Christ and seated us with Christ. Can you imagine that you are not just here in this world, but you are to world, the in the world, but not of the world. You are actually here when Christ seals with his spirit. You are far and above every principality. Wise men, are you allowing yourselves to respond to such things? Whereby you want to fight, as Paul said, that the weapons of our welfare are not common. We are not fighting with flesh and blood, but with principalities. Listen to what Paul tells us. He said, God is a working of this group, preparing us so that we will know how to conquer in the age to come those wicked powers that are in the celestial heaven. I know some of you, many of you, said I want to walk the streets of gold. Many of you said I want to go to the king. But my friend, there is above this earth, there is above the heavens a place in Christ, that nothing can touch you. There is something that there is no match for. The devil, my friend, he is no match for you. Your flesh, my friend, it's a no match for you. The world, it's no match for you. You are seated above all principalities, all of the wickedness. Yes, Ephesians 6 is important. The whole armor of God. Why? Because we are in a heavenly place. Forget about that person who told you they didn't like the way you look. They don't like how you act. Look beyond and see what spirit is working in that person. And that's where you have the power. You are far and above all of this precious stuff. Why do we allow ourselves to be subjected? Paul writes and says, Somebody said, Don't touch that. Somebody said, Don't go there. They say you can tell us growing up that you can't handle a pack of cigarettes, that you're not supposed to touch the ears. But they misread the scriptures. Paul said, We ourselves are not subjected to that. Yes, stay away from it. Yes, you don't use it. But listen, my friend, you touching that does not make on your salvation. You, my friend, they used to tell us, don't go to the store and buy liquor for somebody. I don't ever you doing it. They tell me don't bring my cigarettes. I still don't advise you doing it. But my friend, my touching is something and I'm far and above. It cannot subject me. It cannot pull me down. Like the 
song I just said, I'm happy. He says, I'm happy. Nothing can throw me down. Listen, you must remember these things are no match for a child of God. You have power to walk on the right, power to stand steadfast. Power. Whether you enter the church now to live holy as unto the Lord, whether I'm in the dark, whether I'm in public, my life, my deportment says I'm far and above the heavens and the earth. Clap your hands, shout. Listen. That's where we are today. Yeah. Nothing is a match for you. I know that problem you have. You thought you couldn't solve it. You can't. But listen, if you just step back and see where you are seated, they shine in Christ. The Bible said we are joint heirs. We are joint enjoyers. We have a joint allotment with Christ. Christ. Think about it. Read Ephesians. Read Philippians and Colossians. It talks about us being in Christ. And with Christ, we are seated far and above. Get out of your feelings. Let that attitude go. Think where Christ has seated you. And Paul says, if you live, be risen with Christ. Seek those things that are far and above. It's time for the church to realize that there is no match for you anything on this earth and nothing in the heavens. You are far and above every principality. But read the scriptures. This is not our home, and a kingdom is not promised to us, the ecclesia, the church, as it's translated, to the body of Christ. No, that's not for us. That's for Israel. That's for the people that's here on earth with them. It says, I saw a new heaven and new earth. And it says, coming down from there. It came down to the earth. That's not our place. God's not going to put us far and above and then demote us later on. No, we are far and above. There is something that God is working in this ecclesia that never was shared until the Apostle Paul. Then Paul breaks out and says, this is given to me. And he says, if an angel or anyone else preach any other evangel than this, he said, let them be a curse. Let, don't let somebody bring you down and tell you that you are far below. You are not. The evil that's in your life is God working to show that we will be competent as the word is written in Colossians, we shall be competent to rule far and above. How would you know how to rule the principalities and the powers if you don't experience right now such evil? The Bible says, but he's preparing us. He's working it out in us, showing us. And that's why every believer should be able to say like Jesus, get that. Step back. Go away. You got to tell your flesh that. You have to tell the world that. The spirit of that. You have to tell the devil that. You have the right. And notice the next verse says, and the devil, and he left him. When you know how to handle spiritual wickedness, your life will change. It doesn't mean that he was going to go away. But you'll understand the multifarious wisdom. The diverse wisdom of God in your life, knowing that all of these things, the evil and the good, work to develop you to become the person to bring deliverance to someone else. How can you bring deliverance to someone if you haven't gone through? Paul is in the God of all comfort. He said, he has done this to me, that I can comfort other people. That's why it's so important to understand what God is doing in your life. And you're not going to always see it. But you must learn how to trust him. And you must realize that what God is doing is no match for anything that comes against you. The power 
is in the spirit of God in your life. And so John is correct. Greater is he that is in me than me that's in the world. I'm in the world, but his power is in me. And so I have this greatness. He says this treasure in earthen vessels that the power may be of God and not of me. Again, listen, you, there is no match. No match for you. You cry. You cry. Yes, we cry. The song that said, I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. He said, listen, but that's all right. He said, because Jesus is going to fix it. We're after a while. We may not fix it right now. We may not fix it next week. But if I hold on, I know that it'll work to my good. That's where you have to understand God. It's a process. It's insane to even think that God is in charge of everything. It look like everything falls apart. But he is. And he's bringing it out and he's explained it in his word. Sharing with us that all you must do is just walk with him. Depend on him. Trust him. All, all the illness is not going to leave us. All the things that we get into, making wrong choices. As we call it natural, that's not going to leave you. You're human. But listen, you have to realize that the choice that you make, like Joseph's brother, oh, you were trying to be slick. You were trying to be sneaky. You were trying to work things out of your way. And it went wrong. But in the end, it comes to find out that though you meant it that way, God had it set up for something else. This is how God works in our life. Oh, you don't fall apart. You look back, somebody said, well, if you had to, if I had to, we talked about children one time. I told my kids, I said, if I had to turn it all over again, I would change a lot of things. I would. I, if you, that's, that's what you learn. But you can't change the past. Somebody said, but you sure enough can make amends before the future. And you can go. You can't go back. This is so important. God has given us the ability to apprehend to comprehend that there is no match for us. You are in a place that you don't even know. Let me cry, fall out, let me, no problem. But know this, that whatever you're in, whatever has beset you, it's no match. After a while, you will sleep away. I'm gonna say this last part and close out. Notice in the next verse, it says, he left it when he said, always. I want you to think on that problem, that thing in your life right now. I just want you to shout, go away. Go away! Listen, notice, when he said that and the devil left, the Bible said, and then the angels did what? Minister unto him. Do you know that many times you cannot get the ministry in your life of the spirit because you have embraced that thing by complaining, by holding on to it. Somebody say by not forgetting. And so the thing stays there. But once you can tell it, go away, then the ministry of the spirit can come into your life and it can work in your life whereby you are going through the struggle. But you come to the place to find out is no match for you. And you can say two words. What is it? Go away. What are they? Go away. Listen. You got to tell yourself when things crop up in your life. You got to tell yourself, go away. I got to let God work in my life. I got to let God work this thing out. And because we are our biggest, not the devil, not our relative, not our co worker. Our neighbor, we are our biggest enemy. And we're held back by ourselves. But thanks be to God, grace is so wonderful. Because grace, it requires nothing. It's God's choice of you. Today, look at you. God chose you. Out of all the people out there, you read the newspaper, you see the news. Look, look, you woke up this morning. Do you know somebody, as Elder Fisher said, somebody, the alarm clock went off and they didn't, need, they didn't move. They were gone during the night. But look at you. 
You even got up before the alarm clock. And you felt all right. You felt good. Have you ever before woke up before the alarm went off and you just felt good? Other days the alarm went off and you tried to smack it out the window. Here you just did everything changed. But this is us. This is how God works in our life. Everyone stand to your feet. Give God a round of applause. There's the match. Nothing can match the power that's in your life. This message is to encourage you. Though you feel like I'm not as strong as I used to be. I, 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 I think I was better off last year. Don't worry about it. God's working your life. You've come a long ways. You've come up. Even when you can't see it, isn't it good that God is the judge and not us? For he's looking at us and he's working it so that we can become. Notice this. Competent is what the scripture says. We can become competent. The work of this celestial grace. I want to pray for you today. You don't even have to come to the aisle. I just want everybody to lift your hands. Because I'm praying for all that are here. That the power of this message, that you understand there is no match. No match. Step out of that thing. You're fearful. Tell it to go away. Tell fear to go away. You, 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 you have to. You, you feel despondent. You feel cast. Tell that spirit to go away and watch God begin to minister in your life because you have to trust Him. You have to depend on Him that He'll work it out. You know what I got to do. We can't do it, but He will and He can. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, it's our glory. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us this day, for the word that you have allowed to be articulated to those that are here, for it is for them that you have designed this word. Someone today, Lord, they felt like that they weren't where they're supposed to be. But thanks be to God. Lord, they are exactly where you want them. Lord, though it seems as if that they do not have all that they desire or need. Lord, it is you that's humbling them to cause them to understand that they cannot live by the things down here alone. Lord, but by every word that is articulated from God, it can cause us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right now, Lord, each man, each woman, boy, girl, Lord, young or old, let the power of this message, Lord, and as we invoke you in this prayer, to cause them to understand that they can seek your word, stand on it, and declare to temptation to go away my God and by God's grace Lord which is sufficient to carry them through to the point of deliverance Lord that you are right there with them Lord for we bless you we thank you and we believe you that we are more than a match for anything that comes against us because we have the power in Jesus to say go away. Somebody shout once again, go away. Go away. God bless you. You may be seated.